will conclude all the characters for the deck. We'll move on for the items in the deck. Now, items, equipments, counters, and environments can all be played face down on the game board. And this is one half of a game board, actually. You would need two of what you see right here to be able to play the game, and an opponent, of course. And they would be played face down until you wish to use them. Uh, this item right here is called Magic Potion, and it lets you gain 2 MP when you play it. In the starter deck, there are four copies of it. And again, managing your MP is very crucial. So out of the combined 50 card deck, having four of those in there will definitely keep your magic points, you know, steady enough so you can play things. The next item is called Fruit of Life, and it states gain 1 MP. When this turn ends, eject this item. So after you play this card and it gets sent to the grave, at the end of your turn, it ejects into your hand. So it's a constant thing that you can keep playing over and over, gain 1 MP every turn. And it's a bill, and there's two of it in the starter set. Next, we've got Horn of Temptation, which states, move a character your opponent has on the battlefield up to three spaces. That's a good card to set your opponent up for, you know, later things I'm going to describe, like counters and that kind of stuff. Basically, it can move you out of, it can move your opponents out of protection areas and, you know, right into your line of defense. So you'll be able to take them out real nice. Next item is Blaster Bomb, and it states, discard a card from your hand to destroy any option on the field. Now, these cards, these items, equipment, counters, and environments are also what's known as options. All collectively, they're known as options. Characters are not considered options, so Blaster Bomb would not be able to target a character on the board. They would only be able to target an equipment if face down, a counter if face down, and the environments. Environments are permanently on the board, so they, I believe, can be targeted by Blaster Bomb. All right, there's two copies of that in the deck. Next, we've got Book of Idealeology, and some of you may recognize the text from Yu-Gi-Oh!, but either way, it states, draw three cards, then discard two cards from your hand. I mean, personally, I like the art much better than I did the Graceful Charity art, and I'm a seven-year Yu-Gi-Oh! player. Started back in 2000, gave it up in 07, so... You know, I appreciate cards that allow you to do this. It lets you, you know, get through stuff and then, you know, get stuff out of your deck and then throw away what you don't want. Sets up combos later on if you want to use it that way. There are two copies in the starter deck. Next, we have another item called Bulldozer, and it says eject any standby card. And what a standby card is, on top of being classified options, would be any card face down on the board. Any of these, you know, items, equipments, counters, or environments that are face down, that have yet to be activated, are classified to be in standby mode, which means Bulldozer can bounce them right back to your opponent's hand, or back to your hand if you happen to block yourself into a corner. There are two copies of that in the starter. And next, we've got Revival Powder, and that says, search your disposal, which is essentially your graveyard, for a character, then eject it, which means return it to your hand. Two copies of that in the starter set. For our next lineup, we've got the equipments in the starter set. There are two force field, and that states when it's equipped to a character, the defense is raised plus 20 for the linked character. The linked character cannot be destroyed by an ability. And again, that's something that's going to protect you for, you know, battle and whatnot, make you a little bit harder to kill. Iron Glove is the polar opposite of that, and uh, it raises your offense plus 10 times the number of characters your opponent has on the battlefield for the linked character. The linked character can only execute physical attacks, so if you put this on a character with a different type of ability, it's going to limit them, but it also makes them stronger. There's no limit to the number of equipments you can have on a character, but you might want to be careful because even though this can power up your guy in a time of need, it also limits them. All right, and there's two copies of that in the starter. And then next, we've got a well-drawn uh, equipment card called Rabbit's Foot. And this is one myself and the wife enjoy abusing. And uh, that states, the speed is raised plus four for the linked character. And there's two copies of this in the starter set. Now, what is speed? Let's see, I'm going to pull a character out real quick. We'll go with Majesto here. And uh, speed, you'll see right here under the speed status, two. 
That's how many blocks on the battlefield he can move. So if Majesto here was equipped with a rabbit's foot, instead of being able to move two, he could move a total of six combined spaces during the turn. All right, we'll put that down and go to the counter cards. And this is where the game really starts to get not only fun, but very lethal. This counter is called Proximity Mine. There are two of them in the starter set, and it reads, If a character lands on a space and is in the zone range of this counter, then add three damage to it. Now, three damage is very prominent in this game, because for every damage on a character, it doesn't kill them, but it decreases their stats to a minimum of zero offense and zero defense. And... With Proximity Mines, they do exactly what you would expect them to do. They damage the character so heavily that they're not going to be able to do much of anything else afterwards. Uh, again, personal favorite, but the wife is actually smart enough to keep out of harm's way. So we've got two Proximity Mine in the starter. Next, we've got the Trap Door. There are two copies of that. Right there, Trap Door. And it reads, If a character lands on a space and is in the zone range of this counter... Then discard the top two cards of your deck to move it to any of your opponent's entry points. Now, that's a useful ability because if you have any of your creatures on your opponent's four entry spots at the end of the your opponent's turn, then you'll score an honor for doing so. It's called an invasion honor, I believe. There are two of that in the deck. Uh, next, we've got Spiked Floor. And there are two copies of that. If a character you have is threatened then add two damage to every other character in its zone range. Um, I'm not quite sure how the wording on this card is meant, whether it's the zone range of this particular counter, or the zone range of the character being threatened. Either way, I plan to ask the creator sometime soon. But the way I've been using it, it's just been really hard for my opponent to do anything after I've been using it. So there's two copies of that. Next counter is Transportal. As you can tell by the art, it looks like somebody falling through a portal. All right, and it states, If a character you have is threatened, then replace it with another character you have on the battlefield. Perfect for switching out something small for something that your opponent may or may not be able to kill. Or something that your opponent could kill, but could give you an advantage. So you would just be able to switch two characters you have on the battlefield. And there's two copies of that in the starter. And next, and definitely not least, is... Uh, the environments in the starter set. There are three, they're all the same, and it's called Castle Walls. The defense is raised plus 20 for all of your characters in the zone range of this environment. And, well, as you can probably guess, that's a very good defensive card. And it's also a good target for the blaster bomb I mentioned earlier because it, you know, it's got a massive range and a good effect. And there are three environments, bringing the grand total of exactly 50 cards in the starter set. You're only allowed 50 cards in the starter set and no more no less. You can have a sub deck but I I don't at this point so I can't really show it to you and you know, I guess that'll conclude the video of the starter set and its contents of Lost Legacy. Alright and until next time have fun take care Take a look at the game, go over to www.lostlegacygame.com. It's cheap and actually very, very fun. Alright, till next time.